Nestled down a small brick-lined street in Williamsburg is a brick two-story home. A four-step staircase leads to a large red front door framed by two windows on either side. It's the home of George Wythe, the first signer of the Declaration of Independence, close associate of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, and a skilled lawyer. He was also, of course, a politician, clerk of the House of Burgesses, one-time mayor of Williamsburg. He also served on the board for the mental hospital. He was a vestryman at Bruton Parish. That's Rachel Merkley. She's the site supervisor of the George Wythe House. She says George and his wife Elizabeth lived in the home until her death in 1787. The house was constructed around 1755. It's been standing here ever since. The walls are about 14 inches solid brick, the interior walls. So I don't think this house is going anywhere. A lot of the original components have survived. Most of the brickwork on the outside is original except for the two chimneys. Glass, floorboards, staircase, front and back door. It's all original to that time period. The home earned its notoriety from Woods residency but there's also a ghoulish figure haunting its halls, Lady Anne Skipwith. Kelly and Brennan says it's her story that's created the most fervor about the house. I'm going to tell you the worst ghost story you've ever heard. Brennan is a historian in the research department at Colonial Williamsburg. She says Skipwith's story starts one night when Anne and her husband Peyton visit George Wythe and attend a party with him at the governor's palace in town. She finds him missing and she searches when she finds that he is in the arms of her sister. The Skipwiths get into a heated argument. Anne flees down the road, tears streaming down her face, to the Wythe house. She lost a red shoe in her rush. Servants heard a distinct, stilted clanking sound as she climbed the stairs. It's from this point that the rumors start. The fight, the heightened emotions, the rush home. Some claim she died the next day, murdered or otherwise. And she was pushed, or she was hanged, or she caught fire. Doesn't matter. None of that's real. Her death in the immediate aftermath of the fight is unfounded. The pregnant Anne actually died three months later during childbirth. The confusion surrounding the events of the party have spawned beliefs that Anne's ghost still haunts the Wythe home. It's become a tradition among college students and outsiders to bring a single red shoe to the home's door, shout, Lady Skipworth, Lady Skipworth, we found her shoe! and await to hear her stilted gait as she answers the door. The story has developed over the years. Brennan says she found a book dated to 1932 that retells the story with a different interpretation. Skipwith isn't a ghost, but a calm, beautiful, and affable person. While Lady Skipwith's story is the most popular, she's not the only ghostly figure tied to the space. 18th, 19th, 20th, and even 21st century ghosts and apparitions are known to inhabit the space. Some figures, like a woman in blue colonial era clothing, have been seen and heard by many throughout the years, though no one knows who she is or how she became tied to the home. Other spirits are more directly tied, like W.A.R. Goodwin, a 20th century minister of the Bruton Parish Church. He spent a lot of time in this building because he was essential to the creation of Colonial Williamsburg. And he's been seen mostly upstairs. And when he's seen upstairs, he's ignoring everyone. Like he's staring out the window, he's just sort of doing his own thing. He may not even be cognizant of the living, for all we know. Of all the supernatural sites throughout Williamsburg, Brennan says most are convinced of the behaviors and identities of the people in this house. It's that accumulation of people, ghost stories, and evolving mythology that keeps the George Wythe house thriving as a piece of Colonial Williamsburg history. Connor Worley, WHRO News.